Hello everyone, welcome back. This is lecture 10. We're going to introduce the detection and the segmentation today. More specifically, we're going to introduce the object detection and the concept of image segmentation and take ULO and UNITE as examples for them and then we will introduce a series of arsenal. So far, we'll be introducing the deep learning under the setting of classification and retrieval tasks. The reason is the classification is where the deep learning started and the retrieval is a good example for demonstrating how we can use features we got from the classification models. However, the deep learning can be used in different scenarios, in fact. So today, we're going to take detection and segmentation as another set of examples. Let's recall an example that everybody is familiar with. That's facial recognition. You know that facial recognition is to recognize the identity of someone. However, before the facial recognition, there is a Another process has to be done that is actually the, fa the face detection. That means we have to locate where the faces are before we can recognize who they are. Here are some examples. I you know that facial recognition can be only applied to the actual faces. That means this part, that is the face and we can run the algorithm for that part. However, there are usually a lot of faces there in that image. We need to know the specific locations for each of them, and we need to know how many faces inside that image before we can use the facial recognition. Let's look at the difference between the facial recognition and the face detection from another point of view. Uh, that is, the facial recognition is a typical classification task in which we give the model an image and then the model predicts the labels. The labels are associated with the identities. We care about the identity. The output is labels. And however, in face detection, we don't care about the identities of individuals. We care about how a face will be look like, and we care about the general characteristics or appearance of the faces rather than the appearance of some of the individuals there. The output is not a label. The prediction are probably coordinates, or more simply saying, the output are bounding boxes there. Face detection is used to be a quite challenging task before. Here is a traditional way of doing face detection. Actually, it's quite successful before the deep learning. It uses a set of filters. We call the idea of filters there. However, those are manually designed filters there. You have to use a lot of them and make them working together and jointly to recognize where the faces is. It's a complicated um, process. I will skip the details there. Anyway, traditionally, we're trying to build the appearance of the faces manually. We have to define the filters. We have to define a lot of rules upon that. And not, that's a tedious job. And the model we build are not easy to be comprehensive. You guys are programmers, you know, they're, you know, you, I guess you understand. There are always some of unexpected situations you have to deal with. But as we have introduced so far, deep learning make everything easier than before because we can learn that part. We can have the model figure out the general characteristics of the appearance by itself. Let me take Yulo as an example. It's quite successful and popular. And let's 
uh, do not stick to faces anymore. The UNO actually can be applied to different types of objects as long as you have the training data sets. The UNO um, stands for you only look once. Uh, that means the image goes through that deep network once. And the UNO is gone have give you the result as the rectangles of each of the objects and that image and also the class labels at the same time. What Yolo is doing actually quite simple. It transfers the detection problem into a classification problem. First of all, Yolo will divide the images into different sub-images there, different sub-regions there. We have done this a lot. You should be familiar with that. Then each of the region here or each of the blocks there is an image by itself. Then for each of that image, you can make a prediction about its class label. So it's a classification problem because you predict the class label and it's nothing different from the classification we have introduced so far. However, another thing you know is doing is it predicts rectangles or the bounding boxes as well um, beside the class, um, class label. For example, uh, those blocks might predict the dog class label. I mean, each of those blocks there predicts the dog's label. And at the same time, it predicts the bounding box for dog's there. So let's take a look at each of those blocks. And each of them, you can consider them as an image, as an input to the neural network. And for each of them, you will have outputs of the class label, class labels, and at the same time you output the rectangles. The rectangle can be represented as a set of coordinates. So the coordinates are just some numbers, and it can be predicted by neural networks. The only difference right now you can see is in uh, the classification problem we have introduced, it typically outputs one label, but right now we might have multiple labels there. And, and at the same time, we have an, another set of labels. Um, they are not actually labels. They are coordinates for rectangles, but in case, you know, the computer knows only about the numbers. These are actually numbers for computers. Coordinates are also numbers here. There's not too much difference from the computer point of view. Um, that is to say, give me an image, I predict some of numbers for you. It's just back to this, um, the things we're familiar with for deep learning. But you know, uh, doesn't really do it uh, sub image by sub image. What you know is doing, uh, taking them as a whole, because we have introduced a lot of times that is the spatial dimensions of image are actually uh, preserved uh, in some sense when they are going through the neural network. That means the spatial dimensions here. Uh, preserve. It's uh, there are some correspondings to its original image. So um, that is to say that some certain parts of the feature maps at each of the layers are corresponding back to a certain part in the original image. So uh, we don't have to do in that case we don't have to take each of those sub images into the neural network rather we can do it at once so the image going uh, are put into that neural network once then the feature map we can take uh, some sub regions from feature maps and it's supposed to corresponding to the uh, corresponding uh, 
subregions in the original image. So we don't have to do it, do them one by one, rather we can do it once. Um, and then at the end for each of the regions, you will have a set of predictions there. As I mentioned, they are just numbers. Those numbers, including those indicators for the class labels and uh, at the same time, it tells you the coordinates, the bounding boxes there at the end as the output. Another issue that Yulu has to deal with is there might be a lot of bounding boxes for the same class label. Uh, for example, for this doc, there are several candidates bounding box there. And for this person, there are another set of bounding box there as well. So you know it's um, using an um, algorithm called non-max suppression to select the right candidates or the right bounding box. It starts as uh, something like, let's take the dog as an example. Um, the dog, it will take the highest score, uh, the one with the highest skull to star for dog. I mean, and let's start with that dog. And here, this one will be selected, and then it's checking out the overlap of other candidates with this one. If the it's with certain type of overlap, it will be discarded. So this one will be selected to discard it, and this yellow one of the dock will be discarded as well. So after that process, you could see here. There's only this one remain in between uh, the final bounding box for the dock. And then uh, let's repeat that same process for the person. And this one is where it started. And it's checking out the overlap with this one and the yellow one uh, discarded and the red one discarded. At the same time, uh, finally, the bunny box for the person is uh, generated as here, and you have the both bounding box for the dog and persons at the same time. Okay, let's put all the stuff together, and this is what you know is doing. Um, it divides the images into regions, and then for each of the regions, you have the classification. Um, the class labels as outputs and at the same time the coordinates for bounding boxes there um, as the outputs as well. Then non max algorithm is employed to filter out the candidate bounding box and finally it figures out both the class label and the corresponding bounding boxes for them. Yeah, you don't have to do this uh, subregion by subregion. I mean, uh, put them separately into neural network, and you put the whole image into that neural network, and it will do the um, the dividing or separation inside that neural networks. Okay, that works well. And however, in some of the application, we are not satisfied to only have the bounding boxes there. Rather, we need exact mask of, of that object, um, especially in medical images. We need the lesions um, in that medical image. Here are some action examples. For example, um, this is an image, and what we are interested in is this part specifically. We hope the output will be a mask that telling us this is the part we're looking for, and those are background we are not interested. And when it applies to the brain images, it will tell us the regions um, and exact pixels for the uh, region of inches, we call them eyes uh, sometimes, and uh, for this as well, and I guess this is quite intuitive to understand that we, we need the exact mask and exact pixels for um, the part we're looking for. This is indeed an image segmentation task. 
and here are the difference from the um, object detection where you can see an object detection we need only the bounding boxes there and uh, this bounding box may contain some of the part uh, not exactly the one we're looking for but that's okay however in semantic segmentation we need um, in different level for example if we're interested in person only we need the pixels corresponding to person and we uh, for some part we don't need like the sky it will be excluded from the mask or more specifically we're interested in different persons in blockchain and it's supposed to output something like this uh, it's called instance level segmentation a quite successful example uh, for image segmentation is the Unite uh, network. And here is the architecture for Unite. And don't be scared at this moment. Let me explain it in a more general sense. Uh, let's see if we have to predict the masks of uh, image. So that is to say we take the image as an example. It's supposed to go through our neural network, let's see uh, CNN. Uh, you could temporarily ignore uh, this part being no, uh, I mean the Unite uh, framework. And just, let's just consider it as a, um, the CNN we have seen so far. So it's nothing for making the prediction as a mask. Uh, actually, we are predicting some of the numbers. That is the benignness of pixels. That means for each of the pixels, uh, the label, uh, there is a label uh, um, a zero of one indicating it belongs to the objects or not. So it's a prediction about a set of numbers there. In, um, with that being said, it's back to the framework we have introduced so far. I mean, uh, classification framework. Uh, and the only difference uh, here is we are predicting another numbers here. And so it's a image as the input, numbers as the output. So here are numbers. And we could put each of the numbers um, as output for a specific neurons at the output layer. So there, in that setting, uh, there's nothing different from the classification uh, from, uh, task we, we have been introducing so far. Okay, um, I, I hope there's a, a, this will help you to understand what's happening. And the only difference is that right now, the same and with the architecture, like this and it looks like more complex than the one we have introduced so far um, let me explain what happened so as other neural networks it takes image at outputs and i i have introduced it outputs and another mask which is with the same size as the original image. Then what's happening there is it uh, has done a lot of convolutions in between. However, you know, by applying the convolutions there, it actually will um, shrink that image. Um, and so it became smaller and smaller. Yeah, but this is not so good for outputting the one with the same size, I mean, here uh, as the original image. Um, so it has to resize it back to the original image. So you can have the prediction which is, has the exactly same uh, resolution as the original image or the same size as the original image. So this is what the UNO is doing. You could see here it's using the convolution as well. Here you're using another set of convolution as well. The only difference is there are two uh, stages. To One is shrinking that image. Another is kind of um, amplify that image is there. We call them upsampling. 
downsampling and upsampling steer. And at the same time, uh, along with that size change, um, Unite is copying some of the output of previously a previous convolutional layer to the corresponding um, uh, layers at the second stage, I mean the upsampling stage. This you could consider this is something similar to the, U, the rest night. So um, it will reduce the residuals uh, or the back propagation errors or the vanishing, the gradient vanishing problem we have introduced before. So anyway, um, there's, this is nothing different from the CNA. The only difference is we have an output which has the same size as the original image. Um, and we are employing a different architecture to implement it. Here you can see that we're using different architectures for detection and segmentation. Respectively, that means you know for detection and unite for segmentation. And it that doesn't sound that convenient. Can we just use one network to do both things? Yes, for sure. RCN and family will be something like that. And the RCN is a quite interesting example demonstrating how can we modify the neural network uh, from detection to segmentation step by step. And uh, let, let's start with the original RCNN. Originally, RCNN is trying to do object detection. That means to figure out the labels, the class labels for um, uh, different regions in the original image and at the same time output the bounding boxes for different objects in the original image. So here is the steps uh, with one input image and RCNN will extract region proposal. That means uh, there might be different regions as candidates uh, for objects. And for each of that candidates, th for this step, the deep learning not even started so for each of the region will be put into a CNN and your network to output its label. There is this part is nothing different from the classification steps we have introduced because taking one image as an example and output the class label. It's a typical classification. The only difference is here we have uh, some of the region proposals. So to find out region proposal, and actually um, here is a selective search for which I well uh, developed uh, previously, and it's actually uh, finding out some of the candidates which are possible objects. And there are a lot of statistics uh, in between to determine its, um, the probability uh, of its being an uh, object there. But anyway, the selective search is going to give us a set of bounding boxes there, telling us uh, those are possibly some objects there. Please check it out. Then after that, for each of the regions, we can input them into that neural network. Uh, as we have introduced previously, the neural network will output some of the um, features for us. And RCNN is actually not using uh, the deep neural networks for making the prediction. It's using the traditional SVM, which we have introduced previously. So in this case, deep learning only provides the feature maps, the feature vectors, uh, namely. So SVM will output the class labels there. You could see here, we have bounding box from the selective search already. And for each of them, we have a class label there. Then the object detection is done. Actually, another thing the SVM has to 
uh, do is to do the region proposal because it has the same inner problem as you know uh, that is you might have several proposals about one object in between you have to figure out what exactly the bounding box is and this can be considered as a regression problem let's see um, each of this let's take the uh, top left color of each of the candidates as an example what we need is actually finding out a regression a certain point as outputs in that case it's a typical regression problem because we have to find the best part which has the minimal uh, arrows from those uh, proposals there and this is the best one which can minimize uh, that top uh, top left corner of that region and this can be solved uh, in a lot of algorithm um, and like the gradient descent we have introduced it's actually with that certain loss function you, you are able to do in it but here we're using SVM so in that case we could do similar things with this corner and even if we want to represent in different way we can regrade the center of that region and uh, regrade the width and height for that region as well because we have those candidates and uh, we can regrade them using the regression and that part is taken by the SVM in original RCNN. However, the problem of RCNN is that it has employed the, the selective search. As I mentioned, there are a lot of statistics you have to do um, during the selective search and that takes a lot of time. So it's time consuming and at the same time it's making the original RCNN takes a lot of time. So, so here comes with a fast RSN because it's fast compared back to the RSN. The idea is we don't have to do the region proposal outside the neural network because like in the you know we, we don't do that because the regions can actually be figured out from the feature map because uh, as we have introduced many times the feature map preserves uh, more or less the spatial dimensions of the original image so by taking uh, sub regions from the feature map it's the feature vector or feature map corresponding to uh, some part of the original image so to find out region proposal you can do it from the feature map directly rather than actually do it an outside the neural network like in a selective search so in this case the fast rcnn is doing that by taking the final feature map uh, as an input and it proposes another region steer directly from the feature map and uh, it takes the features from the sub regions as the features for the region proposal then you can do really similar thing like we have introduced in original RCNN however at the same time you have to deal with the regression as, um, there uh, previously you were using the SVM but actually the regression can be easily done with the neural network so you can see here um, the fast RSN make the making the process faster because it only um, requires one pass of that image into neural network. It will fulfill and it will implement um, everything inside that neural networks and that make it faster. However, that is not enough. 
because you know even the fast RSN and are doing the region proposal inside that neural network but it's still using the selective search and that selective search still takes a lot of time um, in that case here comes the faster RSN the name is quite interesting because it's faster compared back to the faster RSN the idea in the faster RSN is because the selective search takes a lot of time. So why not we do the region proposals inside that neural network there? In that case, we can actually subsampling another feature, uh, subregions of the feature maps there as a candidates, and then we regrade uh, that part at the end. So it's quite similar. The only difference. Uh, between the fast RSN and to fast RSN is the region proposal network specifically replace the static search and it's quite intuitive. I will skip the details here if you're interested and you can check out their papers. And the latest development is actually the mask RSN and previously in RSN and fast RSN and faster RSN, they're doing object detection actually. But however, the mask RSN is doing image segmentation. Here are some impressive results. Uh, there are outputs of the mask RSN. The mask RSN and trying to um, address some of the problem of the fast RSN. Um, uh, that is its object detection and at the same time um, uh, it's not accurate enough. Um, so um, what mask RSN is doing is um, one the ROI alignment that means even we mentioned a lot of times the feature map is corresponding back to some original region of the uh, <coughs> original image. However, it's not accurate enough. And a mask RSN has using a better alignment of that part. And also, um, the VGG neural network was replaced with a risk night because risk night has another dis uh, advantages over the traditional CNN. We have introduced that uh, part before, and specifically, it's um, predicting the mask. Uh, it's a semantic segmentation results, and here is what happening. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the better, better alignment of the subregions of the feature map to the original image there. So it will create much, uh, much more accurate results. And at the same time, it predicts the benignness of pixels, so which will give you the mask. That is uh, object detection and um, the, the very detailed instance level segmentation at the same time and uh, it's um, and it's quite successful and so that's what we call it latest uh, RSN and I will skip the details here and for those who are interested you can check out their original papers okay thank you very much that's all for today